I'm Jamal Finkley with Black Tree TV, and today we have the pleasure of having presidential candidate, the Honorable Sister Cynthia McKinney, here with us on our show today to talk about her platform with the Green Party and being what we've we, what we've described as the other candidate out of the, out of the party. So. Cynthia, first of all, thank you for taking the time to come and join us here at Black Tree TV and talk about your campaign. We're honored. I mean, you know, it means a lot to us. Well, thank you very much for um, sharing me with your uh, audience. Okay, okay. So let's talk about your campaign. You're, you're running for President of the United States for the Green Party. Mm -hmm. So first of all, tell our viewers who may not be familiar with the Green Party and their platform, what, what's the Green Party, how it got started, and the history of? The Green Party has been in existence in the United States for about 20 years. The Green Party is an internationally recognized party that actually has political power and makes public policy in other parts of the world. There are some very famous people who are members of the Green Party. For example, Wangari Mathai who won the Nobel Peace Prize, was a member of the Kenyan Parliament, okay. and she was a Green Party member. She represented the Green Party in the Kenyan Parliament. Okay. Ingrid Betancourt, who was the hostage that was recently released in Colombia, okay. um, was running for president at the time of uh, her capture, and she was running for president under the banner of the Green Party in Colombia. Okay. Um, so, um, the Green Party has uh, parliamentary slots, the Green Party has um, actual government slots in other parts of the country, and, and other parts of the world, particularly um, in Europe and the European Parliament, uh, various individual country parliaments that are the countries that constitute also the European Parliament, and um, they are part of governing coalitions. The, the country of Germany at one time was governed by a coalition that included the Green Party. Um, now the city of Bremen inside Germany is governed by a coalition that includes the Green Party. The country of Ireland I was just interviewed the other day by an Irish newspaper because they are uh, following um, developments in the United States with respect to our Green Party because the Green Party is part of the governing coalition in the country of Ireland. Okay. Um, so the Green Party in this country has about 200 elected officials. They are mostly in local uh, positions. Um, and uh, generally uh, are elected in nonpartisan races. And so that means that a, a lot of people have the opportunity to vote for the Green Party. Oftentimes, though, they don't know that they are actu actually voting for the Green Party. Unfortunately, we have uneven ballot access laws from state to state. One would think that federal elections would be governed by one federal or one set of federal statutes, but that is not the case. So, um, for example, in California, voters have a lot of choice, and you have the Independent Party, the American Independent Party, the Constitution Party. You have um, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, the Peace and Freedom Party. You have so many political parties in California. In Georgia? You have the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, and then in certain elections, you have the Libertarian Party. And that's it. And so you go from states like Georgia and Oklahoma, where it's difficult for smaller parties to even get on the ballot. Now, why is this? It's because the ballot access laws are rigged to favor the two corporate parties. And then the uh, Green Party has a message of social justice, grassroots democracy, ecological wisdom, and peace. And yet, that kind of a message is really uh, squashed 
by the corporate press. The corporate press are there to promote the corporate parties. And so then we rely on outlets like Black Tree Media to give us an opportunity to present our platform. Okay. Well, most people will know you from your years at, as a state representative, um, just representing my home, my home at County, DeKalb County, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you did that for 10 years straight and came back and did another two years and you were you were a Democrat at that time. What was yes. what what was the what made you decide to to transfer parties? I guess I served in the Georgia Legislature and the Georgia House of Representatives for four years. I served in the United States Congress for a total of twelve years. There were uh, two years that I was out of office, and then I went back into office, and then I got kicked out of office again uh, by the War Party. And the War Party consists of both Democrats and Republicans. We have to understand that. And um, basically, you could say that I had been extremely uneasy with the relationship between the black voter and the Democratic Party for a very long time. And I looked at the practice of politics in my own home state of Georgia and how the black community in the state of Georgia basically voted always Democratic. And yet the conditions really didn't improve for those who needed it the most. And that if you looked at the willingness of the Democratic Party leadership to even articulate issues regarding eliminating disparities that are uh, still existing in our country, the racial disparities, to allow for uh, black participation within the ranks of the leadership of the party that reflected the vote that the party gets. Um, there was this hesitancy to um, what I believe return to the black community and to black voters the investment that they had made in the Democratic Party. Uh, CNN did a, stu a, a study and they found that had no blacks voted at all in the 2000-2004 elections that in 2006 when the Democrats controlled the majority in the Senate, that that uh, Democratic Party control of the Senate would have evaporated. And so that's what really led me to begin to think about if the black vote is responsible for Tom Daschle being the majority leader in the Senate, then the black community ought to get some of the benefit from being the majority party in the Senate. Right. That's what one thinks of when one thinks of investment. You think of dividend. Right. You think of growth. You think of return. Well, if the black community has an investment in the Democratic Party, which it does, and yet you can look at National Urban League, United for Fair Economy, NAACP reports across the board, Harvard University Foundation, Loyola University, Hull House, New York Times, no matter where you look, the story is the same. That we have social injustice, and that can be measured by race. We have a lack of economic opportunity, which can be measured by race. We have racially identifiable economic groups which should not take which should not exist because the a, a truly integrated society ought to be integrated in terms of access to opportunity and also integrated in terms of those who fail to take advantage of opportunity or those who make mistakes. But when you have a criminal injustice system that is racially identifiable, then clearly the administration of justice 
is not fair. Right, right. And so all of these various um, statistics and studies, I read them all. And um, I remembered that I used to be a political science professor. And I used to teach what is politics. And the definition that I would give my students is that politics is the authoritative allocation of values in a society. If the statistics from study after study after study after study are giving us basically the same message, then it's clear that somebody's values are being allocated, but it's not ours. Okay. So then what is the strategy that is most appropriate in order to change that objective set of circumstances? It means then that we have to do something different in order to get something different. If we want public policy made in our values, made to reflect our values, then we have to make sure that there are people elected to office who are true to our values. Mm 